So, uh, again, uh, Socrates is our um, main figure, and uh, today uh, I would like to invite you to reflect on the place of uh, uh, Socrates in the history of um, uh, philosophy, uh, not only in, in Europe, but uh, broadly speaking, in an entire history of philosophy, in particular, a history of philosophy in the United States. And uh, I was not, uh, uh, I was afraid to send you an entire book of uh, more than thousand pages, which was uh, published um, uh, last year by uh, an American author, um, uh, Christopher Moores, on exactly reception uh, of uh, Socrates in the Western uh, world, uh, exciting uh, volume. Perhaps if privately some of you would like to to, to read it, uh, or some part of this book, please uh, uh, write me an email and I will be glad to, to share with you this volume, because I, I think this is, uh, uh, you know, of course, we need a lot of time to, to read such uh, volumes, but nevertheless, we, we enter in, in the certain history of reception of this fascinating figure. Uh, but, well, let us stop uh, in, in, in this philosophical appetite and uh, focus our attention on the comparison between um, uh, Socrates' death and the death of Jesus of Nazareth. As I mentioned, uh, and I briefly commented also, uh, this uh, Socrates' defense, and uh, now I would like to invite you to read uh, slowly the second uh, um, testimony, the John uh, Gospel, where we have a history of, of Jesus, uh, particularly the last days, accusation, process, uh, horrible death, and the reaction of people around him. So, uh, and when we read uh, both these testimonies, not as uh, holy text in case of the gospel, or just a piece of tradition as in case of uh, Socrates' defense, but we try to, to discover uh, the dynamic of uh, the process, or the history of concrete people, uh, not only of, of Socrates and Jesus, but also those who were around them. Uh, in case of Socrates, we know that his students disappeared. Plato, who was so fascinated by him, was absent in the moment, and many others, Xenophon. So where they were, when the master of them, someone who taught them how to live, how to philosophizing, how to live a decent life when he was facing a, an extreme uh, danger moment in his life because he was falsely accused by those who were simply, um, uh, I don't know how to call it, uh, he was jealous, they were, they were jealous, they were afraid that uh, through his uh, uh, activities he will deprive them of uh, influence or gaining money, I don't know, there are many other possibilities, but they were not there. This is alone, the master was alone with his accusers and with his, with these uh, judges who condemned him to death. And the same situation we have with Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, when, when you read the, the Gospels, you see a, a, a rabbi, a, a, a teacher, who is admired by his uh, listeners, by his students. They, he was uh, surrounded by them during his uh, 
activities, his teachings for three years, as we suppose it was more or less three years. But uh, in the moment when he was arrested, all disappeared suddenly, not friends, not students, uh, not family. He is alone. So it's very dramatic, I, I would say, is the very um, dramatic accusation of uh, human nature, of humanity, how uh, evil we are, how weak we are, how uh, afraid of facing the moment of responsibility. And I, I think this is also worth it to, to reflect upon where we are when somebody needs our help. We are so grateful for many things to our friends, parents, uh, grandparents, but perhaps they need us in, in the critical moment of their life. And are we thinking that we could repay in somehow what they gave us? I think this is the very, very good moment, existential moment of our, uh, our life. Um, so, but let us move to, with our imagination to the first century of our common era in the time of Palestine and this uh, dramatic nine, night when Jesus was accused. By whom? By priests uh, who accused them of being mm, not pious enough or not pious in, in a way how according to them, the people should be pious. So they accused him of blasphemy. You see, this is a very interesting uh, accusation, right? So he's not accused of being a criminal or to kill someone, but he's, again, as Socrates, accused of being a um, false teacher. What, what Jesus was teaching? He was teaching that God is merciful, that God is close to uh, the people who are most, who most need this, close to poor people, to, close to ill people, etc., etc. And this teaching was considered as uh, dangerous, as threatening religious establishment. Unbelievable. If you, if you really uh, understand what was going on during this process of Jesus, and he was not defending himself, right? So it is, this is the uh, basic uh, difference. In case of Socrates, Socrates was speaking, or in any way, Plato gave him words. Uh, he, we have a transcription, so to say, of his defense. In case of Jesus, he is silent. He is not responding, uh, probably because he was not accepting this accusation. And he thought the judge, Pontius Pilatus, the Roman citizen who was govern governing Jerusalem and Palestine in the name of, of Caesar, that he will see that uh, these accusations are without any fundament. They are not uh, uh, reasonable. But what we see that we have a, a, a certain uh, common business between uh, political power and religious uh, establishment, leadership, that they make uh, this deal. Well, let us get read from, from this Jesus because he's disturbing us. You see, instead of entering in discussion, Instead of confronting uh, uh, real problems, uh, political power, religious power is eliminating someone, this uh, gadfly, you remember, gadfly, the Socrates uh, told about himself that he's this gadfly. And in a way, Jesus was also in this disturbing element in a very quiet, established religious and political life. But he was not revolutionary. He was unwilling to make revolution. He was simply deconstructing the false images of God, the false images of uh, essence of religion, what it is religion, in fact. 
and I think here we can uh, di discover uh, a lot of common uh, elements between accusers of Socrates who were afraid of losing something or Perhaps uh, his uh, teaching was an invitation to change something in the educational system, in the political system, and they were unwilling to do it. So instead of really look and to reform what Socrates was demonstrating that was not functioning correctly, instead of uh, take seriously his invitation to change, they reject him that refuse his uh, contribution to better to better life and uh, in the third part i will i will uh, exactly in this moment what we should do when we have someone who is questioning our lifestyle our way of behaving our you know system of values what we consider as important so when we have someone who is questioning us, usually we are trying to avoid him or her. We are not accepting the criticism or we are not willing in any way to, to, to accept it. But the story, dramatic story of Socrates and Jesus should uh, teach us that we gain uh, in the very moment when we enter in discussion, in debate, but it should be an open debate. We, we should take in mind that nobody, nobody is criticizing me as a person, but, but only the false idea if I have. Perhaps I have good ideas, but I have to, to confront these ideas, right? And uh, in the Gospel of John and in the Gospel of, of other uh, uh, apostles, Mark, Luke, uh, Matthew, we have a constant confrontation between Jesus and uh, the representative of, of religious establishment, Pharisees, uh, the people who are questioning his way of, uh, of preaching about God. But Jesus is... Uh, was never scandalized by, by this rejection, but was like inviting the discussion. Uh, all the time uh, willing to listen what the other side has to say. And uh, the enthusiasm of people around him was uh, like the better testimony that he was right and not, and not uh, his opponents. It's the same in the case uh, of Socrates. While youth, young people were so uh, willingly um, coming to Socrates because they discovered that he had uh, something important to teach them about the world around them, that not the established and uh, uh, recognize authorities are important, but exactly this new way of questioning. But not to, to questioning for sake of questioning, but in order to, to, to find a better solution. This is why Socrates is inspiring us since 2,500 years, and Jesus is, is inspiring also many of us since 2,000 years. So we have this constant inspiration uh, by these two men who really changed the world. But we forgot that both of them, with all rich history of inspiration were attacked so violently that they were not only rejected, but they were annihilated. They were put to death but by, by their enemies. So what is the lesson, lesson for us today? Let us be very aware of what is going around us. And let us be on the side of Socrates, let us be on the side of, of Jesus, and not of those who are accusing them and killing them.
this third part will be about ourselves where we are on which side are we uh, placing ourselves <laughs>